everybody, it's the War Hipster here coming at you with another Contrast Plus painting tutorial and today we are painting Captain Massinius of the White Consoles. Yes, the captains from the Dawn of Fire series from Black Library steps onto the battlefield and he looks absolutely fantastic. Here he is, he looks absolutely wicked. So, we're going to be painting him up today in our usual Contrast Plus style but we're going to be doing something slightly different to what we've normally done with white armoured miniatures. So instead of doing something like Soul Blight Grey or Apothecary White all over, what we're going to do is we're going to actually use some Nuln Oil and we're going to use this as a recess shade. And this is because we've primed him in Grey Sear. And the reason we've done that is we want really stark shadows because the box art has them as like almost black. Uh, whereas if we'd gone for a white scar primer we'd have to use a much stronger contrast paint. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that Nuln Oil on our brush and we're just going to start with a really kind of with our Artis Opus tiny brush. And we're just going to load up the brush with that Nuln Oil and we're going to pick a place to start. Now as mentioned we're going to be doing a recess shade. Now it doesn't have to be perfect because we are going to re-layer it. But what we are going to do is we're just going to go around like this. picking out all the recesses. With the null oil. So with that done, we've got a wonderfully shaded armour all the way around. So what we're going to do is move on to our next colour before we do all the brightening up of the white armour. And the next colour we're going to use is a roughly two to one mix of Ultramarines Blue and Asaman Blue. And we're using this for a couple of details. So the first one we're going to be using this on is this knee pad down here. Like that, just want to make sure you get it right in to the recess. We're going to be using this over the top of the chapter emblem. Like so, and we're going to use this over the inside of his cloak. And so with that now done, what we're then going to do is we're going to use Ultramarine's blue on its own. And we're going to apply this over the top of the outside of the cloak. Just whilst we wait for those blues to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Black Legion and we're going to apply this over a couple of different details. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pick out any of the soft joints in his armour. So looking for things like 
the wrists, palms, the elbows, armpits, knees, and the groin. Just like that. We're also going to apply this over the top of the casing of his plasma pistol. And we're going to apply this over the top of his hair. So with that Black Legion all applied, what we're then going to do is take Leviathan Blue, because our Ultramarine's blue is now dry, and we're going to apply this over the top of the outside of the cloak. So with that Leviathan blue now on and drying, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Gilliman flesh and we're going to apply this over the top of his face. And with that Gilliman flash we'll apply, we then take Agrax Earthshade and we're going to apply this over the top of his tabard. And so with that Agrax Earthshade applied, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some thinned down Retributor armor. Now this might seem a little bit out of sequence, but because we've got that red rope right in front of it, we don't want to try and kind of pick around that. So we're just going to apply this Retributor armor over the top of all of our gold details now. So this is going to include areas such as the Aquila, the decoration on his Power Fist, on his shoulder guards. The iron halo. The fancy bits on his plasma pistol. There's a lot of gold. So with that Retributor armor applied all over, as you can see, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna take some Flesh Terrors Red and we're gonna apply that over the top of the rope. So with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some Briar Queen Chill and we're going to apply this over the top of his tilting shield on the left hand side. Just like that. And with that done, we're then going to take some Wildwood 
I'm going to apply this over the top of the string. And the inside of the belt buckle. As well as this little strap just here going across that bone. And with that done, we're then going to once again take some Black Legion and we're going to apply this over the other half of the tilting shield. And so with that Black Legion applied, what we're then going to do is take some thin down iron warriors. And we're going to apply this over, well, pretty much all of our remaining details. So we've got the mechanical areas on the pistol that we haven't painted in yet. Like that little bit there. We've got the reliquies and things hanging from his belt. We've got the belt buckles itself. And we've got the vents and the exhaust ports on the backpack as well. And so with all of that Iron Warriors applied, we've just got one last base coat to apply, and that is some Frost Heart. And we're gonna apply this, it's way too much on my brush. We're gonna apply this to the plasma coils. So with that done, all of our base coats are now on on Captain Massinius. So now it is time to add some shades. Now the first one we're gonna add is Gilliman Flesh and we're gonna be applying this over the top of all of the gold, excluding the vents up here on the plasma pistol. This is because we want a nice strong shading and we don't really need to do it over here on the shoulder guard here or indeed over the top of the gorget, but you can if you want to. I'm just going to do it because I can't help myself. Because those details are going to be really bright, it doesn't ultimately need it too much. But in the case of those vents on the plasma pistol, they're going to be really dark. And so with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Nuln Oil. We're going to use this to shade the black details. Like that. And his hair. As well as the silver details. And for our last shade, we're going to take some wild wood and we're going to apply this over the top of those plasma grills.
And so, with that now done, Captain Messinius is now what I would call a war hipster battle ready. And he's already looking pretty awesome. However, we're not going to leave him there, no. What we are going to do is we're going to take him to the next level. And we're going to do this by adding some layers and some highlights. Now, the first layer that we're going to add is, in fact, Corax White. And you may have noticed I've been a little bit cavalier at times, just kind of ignoring some mistakes. So what we need to do is we need to relay some of these white details. First and foremost, we've got the three up here on the tilting shield and we've got the chapter icon down here on the knee. However, what we're also going to do with the Corax White is we're now going to use this to brighten up all of his armour. So we're just going to apply this over the top of the flat panels, voiding all of that lovely recess shading that we did. Now just take your time here. It might take a couple of thin coats to get it nice and bright. That's okay. Just want to focus on really brightening up that armour now. And this will also help us tidy up any recess shading mistakes you might have made. So with all of that Corax white applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to add a highlight. And the highlight we're going to add is white scar. And we're going to be applying this to a couple of different details. So we're going to be applying this over the top of the white armour. Like that sort of thing. We're going to be using this to highlight our Gorse Blaster green area. As well. And we're going to use this to add a little dot highlight along the corners of our plasma coils. So just kind of there, like that sort of thing. So with that done, the white armor is now finished. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some thinned down Hoeth blue. I'm gonna use this to relayer our light blue areas. So this is areas such as the inside of the cloak like that and we've got areas like the the knee pad as well so with that hoeth blue all applied what we're then going to do is take some thin down fenrisian gray and we're going to use this to highlight our light blue areas so I'm just going to start down here on the show on the knee pad. It's not a shoulder. We're just going to run a little highlight going around the knee pad like that. Similarly, up here. on the chapter symbol. Like that sort of thing. And of course, the cloak as well. So with that Fenrisian grey applied, all of our bright blue is now finished. So what we're going to do is move on to his dark blue. The colour we're going to be using is Night Lord's Blue. And we're going to be applying this over the top with the kind of raised folds in this cloak. So what we're going to do is we're going to add this over this little section just here.
like that. We're then going to skip over this little bit here in the middle. And then we're going to add some more Night Lord's Blue. Just over here on the side. top. So with that Night Lord's blue all applied, what we then do is we take some Macrag blue and we're going to apply this over our sharp areas up here on the shoulder because it's quite a soft bit on the back there so we don't really need to do very much more. With the Macrag blue what we're going to do is we're going to pick out these kind of folds up here. And so with that Macrag blue applied, we're then going to take some Alatoc blue. We're going to add a really narrow highlight of this. Over the shoulder. So with that done, the dark blue of the cloak is now finished, as you can see. So that brings us on neatly to our next color, which is going to be the gold. And the color we're gonna be using is Liberator Gold. And again, we're gonna be using this slightly different in different ways. So firstly, what we're going to do is around his kind of shoulder pad and his gorget, we're basically gonna relayer this. So we're gonna apply the Liberator Gold like that. And we're going to apply it across the middle of it, just leaving a little bit of that shaded Retributor armor in there, in the corners. Really tiny amount. I'm going to come all the way around here as well, like so. And similarly, on the shoulder here, we're going to apply the Liberator Gold all over. that sort of thing. However, for our other gold details, such as the kind of power fist over here, we're going to apply this as an edge highlight over the top of all the detail. Like that. We're going to relayer the horse. that kind of thing and the other thing we want to do with the liberator gold here is we want to pick out the trim of the cloak you want to be very careful doing this but if you do make a mistake, you can just go in there and tidy it up with a bit of Night Lord's Blue. So with all of that Liberator Gold applied, there's one thing I actually forgot to do, which is to take a little bit of Retributor Armor once again. And on the main body of this Power Fist, we're just going to use this to relayer the flats. Just avoiding those deepest, darkest recesses.
So with that done, just before we finish off all the gold, what we're going to do is we're going to take some iron breaker. I'm going to use this to highlight all the silver. So with that iron breaker all applied, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some storm host silver and we're going to use this to highlight our really bright areas, the bits that we relayed layered with the liberator gold. So the gorget and the shoulder and the power fist. Whereas for the rest of it, what we're going to do is we're just going to pick out the sharpest details at the points of the iron halo. So with all that storm host silver applied, what we're now going to do is move on to our next colour because we've finished with all the metallics. And what the next colour is going to be is some pallid witch flesh. I'm going to use this to highlight his tabard. And the bone. So with that pallid witch flesh applied, we're then going to take some thinned down dawn stone. I'm going to use this to highlight all of his black details. And so with that Dawnstone all applied, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some Administratum Grey and we're going to apply this in little kind of speckles around the hair. Just to create a little bit of visual interest. Like that. And then we're also going to pick out the sharpest corners on the rest of our black details. So with that done, there is just one last thing to do on Captain Macinius, and that's his face. Now the colour we're going to be using is Reitland Flesh Shade. And we're going to be applying this over the top, just add a little bit more colour into his skin. Quite sparingly, you don't need a lot here. So with that Reitland flush shade applied, we're then going to take a one-to-one -one mix of Flayed One Flesh and Kislev Flesh. I'm going to use this to effectively re-layer all of his skin. Just avoiding all the recesses. So with that done, we then take some flayed one flesh on its own. And we pick out all the features of the face, such as the cheekbones, the bridge of his nose, his nostrils, his brow, his cheekbones. Just like this. So with that now done, we're going to take some Black Legion and we're going to apply this over the top of his eyeballs.
And so with that Black Legion applied, we're then going to take some Screaming Skull. And what we're going to do is we're going to colour in the entire of this left eye. Because it's glassed over from that horrible scar that he's got. So we're basically just going to put a little dot of it across the middle. Whereas on the other one, we're going to put a dot in each corner. Like that. So with that done, Captain Macinius is now finished. I think he looks pretty fantastic. So all that's left to do is his base. And we're going to do a nice and simple scheme here. What we're going to do is we're going to take some wildwood and we're going to apply this over the top of all the soil. And you just want to be a little bit careful once we get close to his armour, of course. But other than that, we're just going to get this all over. And so with that wildwood applied, we then take some Basilicanum Grey and we apply this over the top of the stones. And with that Basilicanum Grey applied, we then take some Iron Warriors and we apply this over the top of the barbed wire. And with that Iron Warriors applied, we then take some Agrax Earthshade and we apply this over the top of the skull. We also apply this over the top of the barbed wire. With that Agrax Earthshade now drying, we take some Sterling Battle Eye and we use this to paint in or cover in the rest of that negative space on the base. So with that Sterling Battle Mire all now finally applied and dry, we're then going to take some Tyrant Skull and we're going to dry brush this over the top of all of our details. So this is all the soil, all the Sterling Battle Mire, the skull, the barbed wire, the rocks, all of it. And all that's left to do after this is to apply a couple of tufts here and there and to finish off the rim in a colour of your choosing. And so with his base complete, Captain Macinius is now finished. And I really, really like this. Whilst recessing shading isn't something that we normally typically do around here, I think to get those really stark shadows on this armor particularly when you look at the box art it's just kind of very very obvious there i think this is really really effective and i really quite enjoyed it so whilst it's a little bit more of a hassle than just whacking apothecary white or indeed soul blight gray over the top i think this looks really really cool really really proud of this one and i hope you like it and i hope you find it useful when painting your captain Macinius. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel, and you want to support me further like these legends and bosses on the screen before you, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Alternatively, you could become a YouTube member by heading to the channel page and clicking on the join button just here, just like these amazing, wonderful people have done. And if you really like this video or you just want to shoot me some support, you can click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel 
And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.